So our next stop was Kogi, which was actually not really in our plans at the beginning, but became our plans when we went to Oshogo. Um, when we found out that the source of like the whole cotton plant and cotton everything like the from the ground up and also raffia is in their in their main place in Kogi. So that's what how we started going to Kogi from Ondo State. It was a lot longer to get to Kogi. It was a little more complex because we went, we missed road. <laughs> like we missed our direction. We should follow left. Okada, I said we should follow Okada. No, Okada. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we should ask us Okada too. I asked Okada, so where road to Okada? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Even talking to her, it was like quite difficult as well. We had to talk to her daughter and stuff like that. But it, we got there, Sha, and it was actually really beautiful. It's fine. The place that Mama Nike had built, like so much even better than the um, Oshobo one. So it's not even just about the house of Mama Nike in Ogidi. It was the, the, the difference between her house and the rest of the place. Like her place was big, white, pristine, really beautiful architecture and stuff like that. And it just made me realize how far Baba Nike came from, like how she really like hustled to get where she was, get where she is right now. And it was a very amazing feat. I just kept on being like, wow, like from this to what she become, like, wow, well done. <laughs> so when we got there, um, we had to wait like a little bit till um, the woman came to help us and things. So we were just there for a while and stuff like that. Then she came and we we're just like, ah, what's up now? And things. that's how she told us that, ah, they're going to pick up, what's it called? Cashews. They had to pick up cashews, cashews. We we're just like, cashews? Like, what does it mean? Like, as in you're making us wait to pick up cashews. Well, anyways, um, she, showed us cotton, we hadn't seen the cotton plants, we are like, oh my god, cotton! And they we were touching it and things, and she was explaining about it. Like this, she used to produce three times in a year. Mm. You have harvest the first session. If you have time, mm. you have to sit down and come out all, all, this, this, uh, all this dirty from the body. And then she showed us raffia fabric, she showed us all these different things and then a few hours later she then showed us um like how she brought a bunch of women to help us like to show us how they do it and do the weaving the threading the spinning the carding everything everything i could like ask for she showed us so you're taking out the dirty <laughs> So guys, how Oh, taking out the seed. That's Jimmy. Yeah. Moving the seed out. Oh. I do look like a crochet. And then spinning. Wow. That's so cool. If you look at it now, no need of joining it together. Mm. Mm. So it just automatically like the more she started to be speaking mm. it, she tried to join, join it. it. Wow. So she swim, mm. she do the swim to me. Okay. Mm. The Kogi people were masters upon masters. Like there's nothing compared to what the Oshobo people were doing with Adire Eleko. It was so beautiful. 
and things. So we're just like, whoa, like we thought we had seen Genge work. When we saw this one, we're just like blown away. This Your own is detailed. This is you can see inside the water. 36 design. 36 design. Ah, for Uluku. So, by the suite, it's 46. Oh. Mm. Design. Like I said, when we got there and we had to wait for like two hours or something, and then the woman was like, oh, we had to go and pick cashews, cashews. We're just like, we're confused. But then in the evening, we then understood what cashews meant to them. Ogidi is known for cashews and they grow a lot in Ogidi and things. And so, and it only is a once a year seasonal fruit and they get a lot of money from that. So many people just pick, 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 and then they sell the cashew nuts and stuff. So that's my first time ever even seeing a cashew fruit. I thought it was just the cashew nuts, but it's on top. It was really interesting. I tasted it, I didn't like it, <laughs> but it was interesting to um, find that out. So after that, like we we're really, really tired because it was a really long, long like day. And things that we were really starving of food and stuff. It was difficult to find food share there to the point that we had to like get <laughs> indomie to eat. <laughs> there is a very small mm -hmm. indomie. Mm -hmm. After that is the super pack. Mm -hmm. Then on Grimman size <coughs> and then belly food size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. So the following morning, uh, we got a good opportunity to like walk around a little bit, like for five ten minutes. Um, we noticed um, that there was a large hill after Mamaniket's house, and we didn't know we could climb it. And apparently, we could. Some of us were too tired to climb. <laughs> 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 But we all got there, we all took pictures. We saw this beautiful, beautiful view of the whole village. It was, it was amazing, I loved it. So um, from Ogudi, we drove to Abuja. The journey from Lokoja to Abuja was the most beautiful scenes we had seen, period, all through our travel. The camera doesn't do justice. It was just so beautiful with the vast, vast um, land, the rocks. Me even saying it doesn't even, like I said, it doesn't do justice. Pictures, video, anything, it doesn't do justice. I think people should do trips to Lokoja, to Abuja, and just see how beautiful the place is. And I was like, we have all these beautiful things in Nigeria, but we, we only look outside, we're always looking outside. We should try and look within. I met my best guy, best friend of the whole, like, of my whole, like, traveling and stuff. Like, he was my guy. And so, uh, he's the one that took us around everywhere and things. His name is Haruna. I'm from a organization. I'll take you around to show you what we are doing.